Well, I knew a lot. I knew that uh, it started as a Japanese series. I knew it's got a lot of cool toys. Um, I knew that there's a legacy to hold behind, and I knew that it carried on through the years. But what I didn't know was that there's so many fans all over the yeah, world I didn't because I knew that they were either. communicating with us and mm. congratulating us. So yeah, it was. A yeah, shock I agree. Moment. I don't know. I didn't realize just how much, just how universe, like around the world, how many people really it was a part of their lives. I think that's kind of surprised me as well. Mm. I think I just knew about the legacy. I wasn't hugely familiar with the show, and but I knew what kind of impression it left on a lot of people. Yeah. I did a lot of um, uh, work with some trainers doing a lot of CrossFit, uh, Muay Thai, kickboxing, boxing. I kind of fell in love with boxing and uh, a lot of yoga, um, gym work, changed my diet, um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've trained pretty hard leading up to even going to Vancouver. And, and as I've said before, that it, I, I think that it was, t the training was to, to have the stamina to get through the shoot. As, as actors, it wasn't just an aesthetic thing. It wasn't just about what we looked like. Um, it was actually, because it was such a physical shoot and you have to be strong, you know? Um, so that was really important, I think. And it was a good challenge and it was a good discipline. And of course we have to kick butt, we have to be superheroes, so. My background in martial arts have prepared me Martial arts training for me is like playing and how it prepared me was like, I think it's like how school prepares you for life. It didn't actually prepare me specifically for certain types of action for this film, but it allowed me to train and learn and adapt to the action I wanted for this character so it comes out organically. I think he is a good leader in the end because he doesn't force it. Mm. He's not like... I am the born leader, I'm going to lead. We, he thinks of it mm. as a team, just as I think of the whole operation as a team, my cast as a team. And I think a lot of the time leaders need to, not talking from my own experience, insert themselves in the group in order to help raise the group up and be more interested in others than themselves. Yes, I and totally agree I try and bring an element of my life and my interest in other people into Jason and I hope that that was conveyed mm. successfully. I think a good leader is humble. Definitely. I think everyone's done something that they that they regret. I think, um, especially in school, things happen. You know, um, sometimes, especially in in for girls growing up. You know, someone's you've either said something mean about someone, or someone said something mean about you. And I think that it's just you know, it's one of these things that everyone everyone goes through. Everyone can relate to. And it's just learning that everyone in school then is going through their own insecurities. And I think when you realise that, it helps you a little bit. And I think that it, it just shows, hopefully, that um, you know, kids watching can see that you're better supporting each other than bringing each other down because you're probably all going through similar things. You know, um, so hopefully that's what kids kind of take away from it. Oh, 100 percent. I mean, that was very. Um, Becky and I spoke about it. We really, no, they had to be. It had to be real. You know, they just like all of us are kids. All of us are people. All of us are humans. You know, whatever gender. Um, and but their relationship, they're not sure about each other at first. You know, and I think what it shows is in school sometimes um, you don't. You know, there's an you don't necessarily mix with certain crowds or you think, oh, I'm probably not going to get on with them. But when you sometimes, when you just don't judge and you just, you know, try new things and try and hang out with someone else, it might surprise you or they might surprise you. And I think that's kind of what, um, what that relationship Trini and Kimberly kind of shows. I think it just comes about organically because um, the core theme is uh, being real. I mean, just recently, this line really hit me as I was watching a documentary about uh, society's perspective or their expectations on on what it means to be a man, right? Masculinity. And the line was, "You have to shed your mask to don the armor." And the armor is the Power Rangers armor, and the mask is what society places upon you. These names, these these archetypes, these stereotypes that society forms upon you. I think uh, for the Power Rangers, the message is that inside we all want to do something good. But what's preventing us is these walls that society puts around us. So um, for us to shed these walls and really to understand each other and can work together, we need to bond together. And anyone can do that. 
the minute that we turned around and looked in the mirror and we had our masks on, it just like re-energizes you because you're like, whoa, that's crazy, you know? And it's weird because it doesn't feel like you because obviously you've got the mask on, but you're like, that is, that is me. Um, that was kind of surreal. I think truly more than the first time I put it on was the first time I saw every single person together with the suits on um, in a scene where mm. I'm filming on top of that cliff because the sun was setting and the light strikes the suit in a certain way that it glistens and then everyone's there together looking over this cliff onto Angel Grove and we're about to go and save it. That really brought the team together and uh, it felt like we're a team of superheroes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, Elizabeth in particular, I guess in any industry there are veterans, you know, in their place and to have an opportunity to work with those kinds of people I think is always the most rewarding experience because regardless of what you take away from it, you're learning, you know, you come to set and act a bit like a sponge and you suddenly realise one day when Elizabeth Banks is on set that the sponge is going to be full, you know, you're going to walk away with some valuable stuff regardless and I think she, Brian and Bill all bring incredibly unique uh, characteristics to their roles that I think benefit the film immensely. I think they're gonna they're gonna love the relatability. Yeah. Um, it depends on what how old they are because we have had we've had fans that come up to us that are four and five. We've had, we've had teenagers coming up to us. The four and five year olds they do the poses and they love the action. They love the spectacle. The teenagers I think they're gonna relate to a lot more. And then again, the old school fans, um, in relation to them and the younger fans, they're going to have an opportunity to enjoy uh, a legacy mm -hmm. that they loved with their, with their kids. That's wonderful. Hey sci-fi movie fans, did you like that video? Well, 2017 looks like it's going to be an awesome year for the sci-fi genre, with some great upcoming t titles including Life. Ryan Reynolds and Jade Gyllenhaal are among tense astronauts cultivating some seeds of life discovered on Mars. At first they are excited, then ecstatic and then very, very worried. As it turns out, it might not only destroy them, but if they return to Earth, everything there too. The Dark Tower. Idris Elba and Matthew McConaughey top line this Stephen King adaptation. Alien Covenant. Catherine Waterston and Danny McBride are among crewmates on the good spaceship Covenant who find what looks like paradise, but turns out to be a much less friendly place. Its sole inhabitant, David, the synthetic person played by Michael Fassbender. What sci-fi movie are you most looking forward to this year? Let me know in the comments below. Keep up to date with all the latest releases by subscribing to our channel and checking the notification bell. See you next time.